Bon, donc je vais vous parler de la transition énergétique. Je vais vous parler de la transition énergétique, mais vue de la relation entre l'homme et la planète Terre. Pendant des années, nous avons vécu dans un monde qui est 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 un underground for millions of years from the biomass uh, derived from uh, superficial life above ground. And we ended up uh, through various sites, stages of transformation to coal, gas and oil reservoirs contained underground. And this has uh, supplied energy and allowed humankind to evolve over the last centuries. But nowadays, we're faced with two major problems which impose the uh, energy transition. First of all, climatic changes uh, induced by the combustion of uh, fossil energies, uh, which uh, we then uh, release into the atmosphere in the form of uh, greenhouse gases. This has led to global warming or more generally changes in our climatic conditions. And secondly, the fact that we have reached the stage when we have burned or consumed about half of the uh, oil reserves are present underground, uh, at least the oil that can be uh, extracted, uh, and gas, uh, natural gas as well. These resources are not renewable, and therefore the transition is absolutely necessary. We're stuck because, on the one hand, uh, the resources are finite, and on the other hand, there are too many problems climatic problems. So we're looking for alternative energy sources, possibly renewable ones. And there is one that I'm interested in, geothermy. Planet Earth not only accumulated uh, passively fossil resources coming from the uh, combustion of uh, of rather the transformation of the biomass, but the planet Earth is alive. There are movements of uh, continental plates, and these movements induce energy release that can be uh, absolutely uh, disastrous. More recently, there has uh, been a collision between India and Eurasia in Nepal producing the uh, Himalayan mountains and all the earthquakes that we have heard about. But there are places where this is happening in a more passive way. The energy released is essentially thermal energy with a crust of only about uh, a few kilometers. And therefore, we can find heat at a very low depth by simple drilling uh, processes, releasing large quantities of energy, of this renewable energy that is produced by Earth, geothermal energy. So there are two situations here. First of all, the situation such as is found in France in average uh, on the continental platform, which is stable. The uh, geothermal gradient is three degrees per 100 meters, not much, but it's more than enough to produce heat. For instance, in the uh, Paris area, we have uh, at a depth of 800 meters, uh, enough uh, heat to heat our houses and produce hot water or heat up hospitals and swimming pools, etc. So geothermal energy in France could meet a fraction of the energy uh, needs in France. And unfortunately, this fraction is forgotten in uh, energy policies. Heat is a kind of energy, and it's uh, crazy to uh, heat up our housing, our dwellings at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees for water to uh, take a shower by using oil or gas, which could be used elsewhere to produce 
produce uh, energy when we have thermal geothermal energy available. The first use for geothermal energy would be uh, heating of houses and uh, hot water, and that represents about 30 percent of our energy consumption for this need. And uh, we could remove uh, some of the uh, nuclear plant production if we were to use uh, geothermal energies and gas and oil could be used for different uses. This form of energy is underdeveloped in France. About only 1% of new, newly built houses are heated uh, with geothermal energy, whereas Sweden, and Sweden does not have a geothermal situation which is very favorable. The uh, basement rock is very ancient, and yet 90% of the new houses are built in such a way that they can be heated with geothermal energy. It's 60% in Switzerland. So why not France? The uh, industrial offer is there, the capacities are there, the resources are there, but apparently there are obstacles that must be removed, and this is exactly what we're trying to achieve with the energy transition. And across the world, energy, the energy transition can uh, happen in some areas more easily. Iceland, Iceland uh, uses 100% of renewable energy because they have wind and geothermal energy. But apart from uh, places like Ireland, Iceland, which is an island and with a limited population, there are also other areas in the world where there is a huge potential being underused or not used at all. For instance, the uh, eastern part of Africa from the Red Sea to uh, the south of Mozambique going through Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania. I'm talking about Kenya, particularly because in Kenya has decided to uh, invest on geothermal energy. I go there, I uh, lecture there, and they have uh, thought of 5,000 megawatts in 2030, 10,000 in 2050. They will do it. They have are making the necessary investments. Right now, 600 megawatts, but they grow uh, every year, and they are going to produce more electricity uh, with renewable resources. So regarding energy transition, I believe that the situation will be the following. There will be a kind of reconversion of the world industrial activity in the last few years. And the industry was relocated in places like China because uh, manpower is cheaper. And China has developed without worrying about uh, the ecological impact of this development. And the coming situation, or at least this is what I want to work on, and this is what I believe I work on, and I'm not the only one, we're going to work on uh, renewable resources such as ge geothermal energy in some countries uh, where this resource is abundant, and this will mean a redistribution of uh, the world industrial activity towards those countries or areas. The energy transition will happen here, but it will happen everywhere else across the world, taking into consideration what nature has to offer, i.e. focusing on places where available renewable energies are abundant.